Secretary Gonzalez, thank you and um, welcome again to the Manila Times. Uh, um, you, I, we saw your interview and so we're, we're glad that uh, you also made time for Manila Times to talk about issues of the day. Um, well, of course, one of one of those things that are important is uh, something that you're uh, very familiar with, the security situation. But before we start, of course, our, our columnist, former Senator Kitata, your old friend, is yeah. here to, to yeah. join us. So are our Malacanang reporter, Tina Maralit, and reporter Franco Barona. So maybe uh, you can give us a, a, a briefing. And I know you're still in touch. Your prediction to me last Thursday proved to be true, but I let it come from <laughs> let it come from you. What's your what's your reading of the situation today, sir? There's security in the news these days. Well, uh, 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 you know the uh, the security sector, especially the Defense Department and the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Uh, one of their major tasks is to really make sure that things are. Uh, as normal as possible. Mm. So, even if there are there are incidents like that, that uh, there seems to be some. Uh, uh, We're talking about the grumblings. Uh, some kind of grumbling. The uh, the the prevailing attitude of those two institutions will be normalize the situation as fast as possible, mm -hmm. and we see that happening. No? So, as far as the grumblings are concerned. Uh, I think it will die down okay. uh, for a while, uh, unless new issues surface. Right. Uh, well, I, I meant I heard you mention that uh, um, that all of these problems should be resolved by Congress. There are, I think you were alluding to the new law. Oh yes. That that um, was passed, right? And uh, that was, I I, I believe, I, if I understood you correctly, that was one of the issues that was causing all of these things and of course the 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 turnover mm -hmm. in the chief of staff's position recently the national security advisor's position mm -hmm. well uh you see the 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 new law i think will affect greatly a few of the classes in the uh, in the uh, the pmas you know? some classes will be affected their their career path will be affected especially when you free some movement of uh, promotions. And if the law will be followed as is, uh, several classes will definitely be affected. Although uh, what I'm hearing is that Congress has become sensitive to the problem and they will be uh, making, will make some changes in the law itself. And that is being awaited. Yeah. That's going to happen. Uh, Maybe, maybe I just want to emphasize pala that sure. uh, we, we are not, in, in my interviews, I never, we really never really questioned the legality of the president to make those kind of appointments. Okay. What, we, what we were commenting on actually is how, how quickly it's done, that there are certain traditions in the changes, especially at the highest positions of the armed forces, there are certain traditions that they're used to. And suddenly, uh, it's uh, it's been abruptly disturbed. Mm -hmm. We we personally, I don't question the legality of the president being able to appoint the chief of staff anytime mm -hmm. he wanted. But uh, it's just that being sensitive to the tradition of the armed forces could have been better. Yeah, but yeah. as you said, things are calm now. Now things are okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, Senator Tata, do you want to ask? Uh, our guests some questions? Huh? Well, yes. Uh, <laughs> he's the expert. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people are, are looking at the situation as kind of security crisis. Mm. Uh, they were fearing some kind of destabilization coming from the military because of the manner by which the chief of staff was uh, changed. There was no destabilization. Mm -hmm. The question is, is the security crisis over? Is it behind us or is it still ahead of us? Well, uh, we, we cannot uh, yet really uh, think of the crisis. No? We will, what will be important is how the new, appoint, the new appointments will play in the, uh, uh, with this kind of situation. You have, for example, 
suddenly you have a new national security advisor. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if there will be changes in the NICA, which mm -hmm. is also important. Then you have a new uh, chief of staff. Uh, what is, uh, I think, when we think of the national security uh, sector, we only one. Uh, we need to also look at the situation of the foreign affairs. So mm -hmm. when you when you look at the overall security uh, cluster of uh, of a president, normally that will be the foreign affairs. The justice secretary will be important, yeah. and then the the head the ALG um, defense. I'm just curious, secretary. Oh. You know, I mean, we welcome you here, of course, right? yeah. but I'm just curious um, why you've come out in the media all of a sudden. Are people calling you to express concern? Are they reaching out to you to deliver some message or um, or is it just coincidence that, that, that uh, you're well, I mean, uh, as former security advisor, people are reaching out to you? Well, uh, yeah, I, I have not been very actively really looking for, for what's going on. It's just that, it's just that uh, some, some, uh, some former officials of the armed forces, for example, whom I, whom I really respect. Okay. And these are uh, officers of the armed forces that normally will not, will not raise a voice or anything, but suddenly there is, there is concern. Mm -hmm. And what they're saying is that this is already our institution. Okay. Um, especially when several classes will be affected by the new law. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, of course, uh, I can't help it. I have to, I have to react. Senator? Uh, Secretary, uh, let's look at the security and defense cluster right now. Mm -hmm. You have a General Centino Mm -hmm. Chief of Staff, who used to be, uh, who was first appointed to that position under President Duterte in 2021. We have now a Defense Secretary designate who used to be, uh, what, Chief of Staff of President Duterte and uh, Coronavirus uh, virus Vaccine Czar, mm -hmm. also President Duterte. Now you have Ed Anio, who is a very trustworthy gentleman. Mm -hmm. As NSA, he used to be uh, Interior Secretary and also uh, Chief of Staff under President Duterte. Um, some people are beginning to worry that uh, you might end up with a security cluster uh, totally under the control of the former uh, President rather than the incumbent President. Uh, what do you say to this? Well, uh, there is always that uh, suspicion, but uh, let me let me uh, divert a bit because you see, uh, one of our tradition is to make, is to always balance the civilian and the military component, especially of the security sector. That is why normally the defense secretary will be civilian. Yeah. or non-military, non yeah. suddenly you have a, 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 a former, yeah. a, and not, not, not long, recently yeah. retired. Yeah. If, if it's somebody like, uh, somebody who has been retired 10 years, then probably will be considered as familiar already with the, the civilian aspect of uh, security. That is why, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe it will. What will happen is that there will be more, more pressure, or more demand in the part of the president to to give this balancing uh, equation when it comes to the security of the state, because the civilian component. I I thought that Clarita will provide that. Uh, well, sorry that it didn't work this is out. Dr. Carlos. Yeah, I mean, the, the former, former uh, yeah, he, he came from the academe. Yeah. She came from the academe. She's from civilian. National Defense College also. Uh, national, well, she, she was there, yeah. And uh, that would have been a good, that's why initially I said that uh, she's a good choice. She was a good choice because I was looking at the combination of uh, 
personalities. That's why I also mentioned here that uh, our knowledge of the the national security cluster, you have the justice secretary. Why was she relieved? At that one, I, <laughs> I don't know. Why was she appointed in the first place? Uh, that one also is... Uh, <laughs> these are... These are important questions, no? but very sensitive ones, <laughs> politically. <laughs> Sir, well, I, I, I know you said things are calm now within the defense uh, sector, but how does that affect the, 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 the security threats that, that we typically face? Of course, there's, there's the threat from, from the CPP NPA. There are, of course, uh, Foreign threats, you know, maybe you know that, that that we typically face. I mean, how how does this uh, we we, we how, may, how does this play into the situation? We may have some breathing space. Okay. For the simple reason mm -hmm. that Joe Masison passed away. Okay. And the the leadership of the CPP NPA is yet to be resolved. No. Okay. I I don't know if they, I don't know if internally they already had their contingency plan because Joe Masison has been ill for a long time. No? Okay. So I don't know their, their uh, contingency planning inside the Communist Party of the Philippines, but the absence of a visible chairman of the CPP NPA could give us some, some, uh, some time. No? Not to worry too much about the CPP NPA for the first or for a while. No? In the case of the, uh, in the case of the uh, Muslim, we really have to begin to evaluate or probably assess certain developments, not only in the Philippines, but in the ASEAN region in particular. Okay. You see, I have mentioned this in our last round table that just before COVID, there seems to be a revival of communist movements in different countries in the ASEAN region. Okay. And most of them are almost dead, but they're being revived. They're being revived and uh, what was disturbing that we have noticed is that these revived small political parties in the ASEAN region are beginning to link up with radical elements, not necessarily communists, but Muslim radicals, for example, something like that. So what, 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 is, the, what is the message there? There, was, there were, and if you remember also that during the early part, and during the first several months, when, when the President Duterte started appointing key communists, you know, in the cabinet. And if you observe some ASEAN meetings in the beginning, uh, nagsa-side trip yung mga yan eh. Okay. Ang, ang kasama-kasama ni Duterte na umiikot sa ASEAN are the former communist, sec former communist secretaries. And they had, I, I know of a fact that they had a meeting in Laos and in Cambodia during those times with other communist leaders, you know. So there was a move in the part of the region. Now, suddenly, that was stopped because of COVID. But now there's no more, that high alert on COVID is gone. So there's the possibility of movements. So for now, I, I'm sorry that we cannot really provide a precise uh, uh, reading of the kind of situation we're facing. We have to observe a little bit but I would really enjoin our uh, intelligence community not to, na not to narrow their observation in the country alone. We must think regional. regional. We have to be regional because the conflict that we are uh, what speculating or anticipating, especially if you think of China, Philippines, Taiwan, US, that, that, is, not, that is not just domestic. Mm. It will have a regional uh, global. and, of course, global. Sa Senator? Mm. Well, how do you expect the uh, defense and security uh, sector to be able to support the president's uh, foreign policy vision of being a friend to all enemy and to an no enemy one. to none? Well, that, that's a... Um, Good slogan to hear, but you know it can't be. You know we have to be. It's just a slogan to you, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> to be. 
Eh, kasi naman, you know, you cannot be... The reality is, how, look, look at the... You know, just look at the... You're saying it's unrealistic? Uh, yes, it's unrealistic. Because you see, look at, look at the situation in our own country, for example. Um, you, 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 you really see very clearly where is the bias of our armed forces. It's with the United States. Uh, is that wrong? Uh, ako, I think, in a way, hindi yan masabing wrong kasi look at what Singapore has declared. One of the primary, uh, sa, 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 sa security nila, one of their objective is how to get closer to the United States and how to win over the, the United States in this, in this current situation. Singapore never said we're going to be a friend to all and enemy. Precisely. No. They're saying no. We would like to be the friend of the United States. That is their major objective in their national security consideration. Mm. So what is the more realistic position now that you would advocate? You know, I, I think that uh, uh, dealing with China will be a, some that will continue be, to be sensitive. But what if you will ask me, let us not lose what we already have in the matters of defense and security. We are a friend of the United States. Don't lose that. No. Maybe uh, nuance it. That, you know, we, kailangan naman, major, we are independent. No? But nuance that friendship. But don't lose something that other nations in the neighborhood are aspiring to have. Mm. We already have the friendship of the United States. Let's see how we can nuance that. So maybe the president is should be attending to that instead of saying that uh, you know that that kind of uh, statement. We are friend to all enemy to none. That's not amount to saying that you have no friends. You have no friends. Because who will be the one to say that we are Ay, sasabihin mo, paano kang kaibigan ay ka, ganun. That, that, is the, that is some of the implications of such a statement. You, what, what is probably important is to start uh, looking at more friends other than the United States. You know, the, uh, like, I would, I would think of Japan and Korea, for example. Isn't that the meaning of being a... a friend to all and enemy we will embrace everyone no enemies how can you make north korea and south korea friends now why is japan you know uh look look at japan why is she suddenly preparing for war our house secretary that's in our paper today mm -hmm. uh prime minister kishida was saying something similar Mm -hmm. Raising issues with the countries that you mentioned, yeah. but doesn't that worry you that Japan is also uh, re revisiting mm -hmm. its its um, defense posture and maybe considering reviving its uh, military? You know? mm -hmm. Does it, I mean is that a concern also? Well, in, in in the in the long term, that will be a concern. Okay, but it's also dependent on the kind of uh, leadership that Japan will will uh, will present to us what what is the you know japan is arming itself mm -hmm. its people have been so used to their peace policy we so used to not advocating war so what what you have there is that probably uh to to, to moderate the possibility of uh of, of japan becoming imperialist again in the future mm -hmm is to have that relations with its people. In our case also, in our case also, our people seems to be ripe for having an orientation of its own about peace, about war. Uh, it, it, it's giving us a hint of what we can consolidate as a nation towards peace. Uh, dapat maging, maging kwanyan, assertive. Just to play devil's advocate, uh, Secretary, I mean, what you're saying, what you're suggesting, isn't that possible, a possible uh, approach also to China? I mean, just to uh, uh, um, maybe 
you know, yes. do, this, do the same thing? I mean, uh, or or what what issues do you would you have with that? Of course, idea? With, with China the same. You know, uh, I think that that is why if if we since we claim to be a democracy, and there are enough uh, indications that we indeed we are uh, keeping some democratic elements in our country, which means that the people's uh, opinion or sentiment becomes very important. So in the case of China, we can always do the people-to-people -people dialogue and uh, connections. But obviously you're concerned there because <laughs> you, said, you said that, you know, maybe uh, what the, re, what? Re strengthen U.S. ties. Uh, but obviously, what, what's your concern about uh, China? My, 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 uh, my concern is not necessarily just China. Okay. Or just Russia okay. in the other side of like the Kishida world. Kishida said North Korea also. No? Or, or North Korea. The concern that's, is that the, it seems to me that the uh, sentiment of those in government all over the world is more moving towards war. Okay. The issue of peace is being given up. Okay. You know, that this is... This is uh, As the, if it's not uh, possible anymore. Parang ganun eh. Yeah. Look... Uh, for example, Europe. Can you imagine uh, Sweden calling for national mobilization? Mm. Can you imagine uh, Denmark. Denmark, Norway, Finland mm. undergoing joint exercises? And joining NATO. NATO. You know, I used to remember Europe when if there are some prospects of war, you will see these countries I mentioned to already be sending delegations and having all kinds of meeting, conferences, discussions, talking of peace. There's no such thing today. What we have is preparations for war. Oh, can you imagine? I which country is this? Building a fence. It's <laughs> a boundary. Also worried about war. That's so when I was in, in, in Spain, this is what I talked about they're talking of a, a third world war I said excuse me the third world war you're talking about is not complete if the war becomes evident in our part of the world then it will become a world war in the meantime this is a western this is a western war Everybody suddenly are worried that they will be attacked by Russia, etc., etc. So because in our part of the world, it is not as intense yet as the one you're witnessing in Europe. I, I am not saying that peace has a, ch a better chance in our part of the world. But because of the level of intensity between West and East, if you want to prevent a world war, Maybe help us in this part of the world. Ang problema kasi, I said, if you look at the West Philippine Sea, suddenly we're being visited by British warships, French warships, German warships. Suddenly, Scandinavia is offering us new fighter planes. So what is what has become... The language of peace, to the language of peace in the world. These people are coming. Why are they coming? To be malicious, if, we, if I will be allowed to be a little bit malicious in this manner, everybody wants a, a, a portion of the pie that can, of the spot, because right now you can see what's happening in Ukraine. Mm. All the types of weapon systems are being tested in Ukraine. And really, every, every major uh, arms manufacturer is sending their prototypes in Ukraine. And the offer is just like what's being offered to us today. That's why we really need to stabilize our armed forces because they are at the, at the center of this. You see? They are offering us new weapon system. It's being delivered to Ukraine. And they're saying, don't worry about the payments. Because it will be paid for countries like the US. So, yung mga weapon system, libre. 
ganyan ang mangyayari sa atin. You know, ako, I'm a little bit worried about our our armed forces. Sana balansihin yun. That's why we need yung composition ng ating sector. Kailangan merong civilian components. So, Mr. Secretary, uh, it's not quite true that countries or world leaders are afraid of war. They're rushing to war. They want war. And probably uh, this is because the world economy is in trouble and it's the world economy that they think will be able to solve their problems. That is why... Um, is that what uh, you're thinking? I, that is why, because that's why I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm too idealistic in this matter. But this is the reason why we begin to, to uh, mention this. Because other peoples of the world are beginning to react to this. There seems to be a very powerful uh, sector like the, the war uh, manufacturers already influencing their own government. You know, there's a big divide there. Kaya yung decision to have more, more equipment being shipped to, to uh, Ukraine, I think that that is not just the government of the United States. I think the lobby groups have to be global. Yeah, yung may maraming lobby groups yan for war. You know, we are we are uh, entering this this uh, possible uh, situation in the world that uh, nagdo-dominate yung war uh, as a as a way of I don't know get. What are we trying to solve with war? No. But you were saying that in this, you were talking about your uh, meeting in Spain. Uh, and you were recently elected to a position. Could you talk about that organization and maybe well, the discussion in, in that group? Well, the, I attended the Congress of the Socialist International. Okay. Uh, the word socialist is a bit difficult to mention, especially in our country, because mm. it's always mentioned as if it's communist. Mm. But the Socialist International is actually an aggregation of social democratic mm. and uh, and labor parties in the world. Okay. There, uh, if I am correct with my memory, it's about 140 or 160 political parties all over the world composing the Socialist International. Um, I know the Socialist International to be in always in the forefront for peace. Okay. You know, I remember Willy Brandt, Olo Palme, really rushing to the Middle East, always addressing the conflict of Palestine and Israel, things like that. They are always in the world. Troubles in Africa, they're everywhere. That's why I'm saying, what's happening to us? You know, the, the social democrats, democratic socialists in the world are beginning to prepare for war. So where's our missions for peace? Uh, that's why I, I explained this to our comrades in Spain. Fortunately, the president of the Socialist International now is the president of Spain. And when I talked to him and his um, assistants, they seem to be very, very apologetic on what they did to the Philippines during those many, many centuries <laughs> ago, they said, uh, you know, that part of our history is the disaster period of Spain. That's what, they, that's how they call it, is the disaster period of Spain. Sabi ko, not really naman. I mean, not 100% not disaster because in the case of the Philippines, we became Christian and we, we, we appreciate that. Sabi ko, yeah. But uh, to make the story short, Kaya ako naging Vice President ng Socialist International, the President of Spain included me in his ticket <laughs> during the, the election. So I won as among the Vice Presidents of, of uh, the Socialist Inter International and I cover uh, Asia, uh, the Middle East, and... Um, Caucasus. Caucasus. Yan, medyo, medyo malawak. And I remember that the Israeli delegation says, let's collaborate. We will work together. So I'm hoping that 
this position I have today will help a little in reviving at least a peace dialogue in our part of the world. And I'm encouraged by the fact that the President Bayon sa United Nations, Gutierrez. Gutierrez, is a former president of the Socialist International. He was a former prime minister of Portugal, now he's president of the Secretary General. A Secretary General, Secretary General of the United Nations. So maybe we can invite him around. I hope that my being Vice President allows me to do that. So that we can do some bit of dialogue about peace in our part of the world. Senator? Well, if you were given the opportunity to talk to President Marcos, mm. who is now in Davos, mm -hmm. what would you like what would you advise him? him? I will tell him that if he can focus on some fundamentals, like food security, it's very important. It's very shameful that while the world is talking about very big issues, we're talking about sibuyas, eggs. salt and yeah. eggs, sure. even sugar. You know, this is kind of... You know, I think we, we, we need to help him in this regard about food security. I think number one in our list of things to do in the country. Wala pa tayong nakita kasi. Kasi Secretary of Agriculture for more than six months. And in this six months, I know it's not his fault. I know it's not the fault of his administration. But you know, Sibuyas is a big joke. So uh, you think it's time for him to name a full-time... Yes. And then focus on what exactly? I mean, given all of the concerns that you observe... Should he review his priorities? Yes. To review, to review think. And what should be his priority? Well, first is, I, as I said, it's really, it's really, it's really food security. <laughs> and really, and really number two probably is our, we have to face our relationship with China head on. Okay. Let's not, let's not engage in too much rhetorics. We have to be realistic and real because there are preparations that we have to do. I'm not talking of preparations for war, but preparing our people in case there is war. There's a big difference. I mean, could, could you flesh that out? Because, I mean, uh, I think Senator Tata was asking you about the, the slogan, friends to all, enemy to none. With regard to China, I mean, what is the, <laughs> no. what is the more appropriate, I don't know, position? And, 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 uh, and how, do you, how do you implement it? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of what do you uh, emphasize or focus when it comes to China, for example. China, why is China, in a way, drum-beating war? Kasi pag may issue ng war ang China, yung people niya automatically nagiging very nationalistic. Okay. And kung sino man yung leader, they will, they will postpone if they have... If they have uh, some reclamo to the leadership in China, that will be put aside if there's a war that is about to be met. Kaya, I, I believe that the uh, war beating in China will continue if only to, to galvanize the Chinese people. To galvanize the Chinese people to keep its leadership. Very important. They have to keep a hold of the Chinese people. And lakas ng influence kasi and pressure on China to probably think of other form of uh, leadership in the country. Very important that they galvanize the, the Chinese people. And this, all of these things that are happening in our region, I think, is consolidating their people towards the present dispensation in China. What was your view? take on the president's recent visit to to Beijing. What's your takeaway there? Well, there were about 14 agreements, agreements that yeah. needs to be signed. Uh, we've been in government. We have, been, we have seen those kind of agreements. Uh, maganda kung magkatotoo. 
I mean, yung mga trade deals, trade deals. I remember our first trip to to these countries. We also got those billions. Uh, but to me, the most important uh, agreement that should have been signed is the uh, joint exploration, oil exploration of China. Parang walang, walang significance yan. But the most important there is the joint agreement because it would indicate that China is beginning to recognize our claims in the West Philippine Sea. If you notice, they didn't mind it because they are asserting, well, why should I sign an agreement, joint exploration? It's ours. Oh, in the same manner, we propose tayo ng fishing agreement. Why will we propose a fishing agreement? It's ours. And why fish agreement? You know, I'm sorry to cite our, our debate during the presidential election. But I'm saying, let us not allow ourselves to be, uh, you know, parang inilayo mo yung issue sa tunay na issue in the West Philippine Sea. Diverted. Diverted. The real issue in the West Philippine Sea is territory. Then suddenly you'll be talking of fish, of fisher fox. How many fisher fox do we have some from, from some ballast? How many are they? How much money do we need to address their needs? If I were the president, I will say no more. Don't fish there. If I have to subsidize your, your uh, subsistence, I will. Because it is diverting us from the real issue in the West Philippine Sea. The real issue in the West Philippine Sea is that our territories have been occupied. We have to focus there. <laughs> it's a choice of uh, approaches, Mr. Secretary. Yeah. One is confrontational. The other is uh, by negotiations. No? Uh, okay, you are talking of fishing. It's a baby step towards something bigger. But you cannot go there and say, okay, uh, President G, uh, you want to assert our rights, our uh, territorial rights to these areas, uh, so we go to what? The International Court of Justice? Well, you know, we ha we already did, and we won. No, that is an arbitration. Yeah, well, I, what I'm saying is that, for example, in this issue in face, okay, but always, always mention that we have an issue that is higher than this. If, if because ang alam mong nireklamo ko kit is not what you are saying na baby steps. Yes, I agree. Ang nireklamo ko is that our own officials internally in our country is really putting aside the major issue and focusing on a minor issue, which is fishing. I don't want to criticize other members of the national security sector, but you see. All of them are talking about fishing. Franco, you want to ask something? Sir, do you think the creation of the National Task Force on Rescue Fishing uh, helped the alleviate the situation? Well, it is important that we have we, we have that kind of uh, uh, at least focusing the issue. Uh, tingnan natin yung agenda ng National Task Force. What is the agenda of that? Ano, what is number one in the agenda of the task force? So what do you think should be the action points of that national task force? I, I think that the national task force should, should really uh, work with the foreign, foreign relations. Uh, ako, if, I will, if I will do something, I will consolidate ASEAN. You know, the West Philippine Sea issue is not our exclusive issue. Mm. Malaysia, Vietnam, you know, they all have issues. Uh, for, forgive me, Secretary, I'm just having a little difficulty reconciling. Initially, you said, you know, you're troubled that the discussion seems to be uh, focused on preparations for conflict mm. and, and, and that you, you want to uh, have some intervention so that we uh, keep the 
avenues for peace talks alive. Yes. And, and yet, when when I hear you talking about uh, the, the, the 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 your policy recommendations, if you had the opportunity to talk to President Marcos, seems to be the the concern that you raised initially, which is you know to to prepare as if that that is a uh, unavoidable unavoidable outcome. I mean, am I reading you wrong or or um, uh, or what what would be the, uh, the the reason why I am asking for the preparation maybe yeah I probably have to explain okay you know the quality of the people matters okay when you enter into a negotiation with another country okay your kind of people so we go back to our own uh, <laughs> your the, kind the, the of people problem. is important yeah. yeah your kind of people is important if if to me, I'm sorry and sad to say this. What will be the perception or the recipe of China vis-a-vis -vis Filipinos? What are they? Ang madaling suhulay niyan. You know? Utusan natin niyan eh. You know, that, that kind of... Uh, that, that's why I said we need some preparations. Uh, what I mean by preparation is really uplifting the kind of people we are. Oh, we are not even sure. I, I, I'm. Do we love our country? <laughs> I mean, you says China very, very essential. Your question now. Do you love our country? Kaya nga yung isang kudos sa interview. Oh, tinatanong ako ng mga tao eh. Mas mahal ba ng mga inchik ng China kaysa sa mahal ng Pilipino ang Pilipinas? That matters not only in China, but in the world. Kita mo naman, no? siguro, uh, ayaw dati ng gera. Eh, kung nagkagera, look at what the world is saying about Ukraine. The Ukrainians love their country. Country? I don't know. <laughs> I think that's an unfair question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I think uh, President uh, Marcos Jr. will <laughs> want to say something about that. You know? yeah. uh, well, obviously, uh, we have certain defects, certain uh, weaknesses, but uh, our people in the service are trying to do their best. You know? uh, but we really need, what I think we need is an, a roadmap. Um, a clear and distinct road map for everyone to follow, uh, given our limitations. Not easy to have a perfect road map, but we should have one. Yeah. Uh, in the last uh, few days, we had uh, what looked like uh, a security crisis. We were able to avoid it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I was thinking. Uh, after only six months in office, this president uh, uh, does not have to face a crisis similar to the one faced by his father 36 years ago after serving the presidency for 21 years. But the fact that he's facing the problems that he's facing right now seems to me to indicate that there are certain important things that he failed to do at the beginning of his presidency yes, and which he should return to and, and do right now. now uh, well, you, you were a former... What are these things? Yeah. yeah. You were a former cabinet secretary, former senator. Yes. If you had the opportunity, I mean, I'd pose your question to you. You were asking Sec Secretary Bert Kalina what he would advise President Bongbong Marcos, what would you, what well, would you say? Uh, I'd, I'd sit down with the president. I, I think the president should broaden his area of consultations with, okay. uh, with his friends and former friends. No? Okay. Uh, yeah, you referred to me as a former cabinet me member. Yeah. There are other former cabinet members who, who are, are still around, who are and, eager yeah. to help if they can, if they are yeah. asked. Mm. But have they been asked? Have you been? Uh, Unfortunately, no. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I, I hear two uh, veteran colleagues of mine saying, we are just one phone call away. Mm. Why are we not hearing anything from the president? Mm. 
at the same time, there seem to be a number of unnecessary mistakes mm. arising from lack of uh, consultations, inadequate human relations. Very good. Yeah. For instance, in the case of this uh, uh, Centino uh, Bacoro affair, yes. I mean, that ruckus could have been avoided mm. if, if there was adequate consultation. I mean, Oh, you could have told the generals, general, you have to do this. Yeah. Oh, it's necessary that they do this because of the morale in the uh, in the armed forces. So, now was on Zana. Of course, <clears throat> all the speculation that the PNP chief had to issue a full red room. alert. No? Oh, the red of course, alert. Uh, General Surin denies it, but uh, regional commanders have confirmed that uh, there was uh, there was an alert, and that uh, all because of the supposed resignation of the uh, DND officials, because the resignations have been confirmed. Right. So, you know, so in the meantime, the president is struggling. Nobody has raised this question frontally, mm. but is it absolutely necessary to be traveling? At this time, when we are having, he is having all these problems that have remained unsolved. Mao Zedong never left China during all the years that he was, you know, <laughs> telling his young people to read the Red Book. <laughs> yeah. So, what is the agenda? Mm. Uh, what is the program that he's trying to? Uh, introduced to the world through this foreign conference. Well, he said uh, to convey that the Philippines is op open for business. Mm -hmm. yeah. Has it ever yeah. been closed? Yeah. <laughs> 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 What's your take? Yeah. I, I agree. Okay. I agree with uh, Senator Kip. Um, he, he has to really start recognizing the fundamentals. Dati-dati, oh. I'm complaining that we Filipinos are very good at analyzing problems and not having solutions. Okay. I think we we are at a point wherein we really have to re-evaluate pa pati yung pag-examine lang ng problema. Okay. I think we, we, do, we, we, are not, we are not on the same page when it comes to the problems facing the nation. Uh, sorry that we have to go to the beginning yeah. analysis of the problems. And Keita said that there are so many. Oh, my young, you know what will be next to Kunyari, young armed forces? Na calm down nothing for now. But s some retired officers are telling me the former president spoiled the armed forces. Now, can we continue to spoil the armed forces? And is that the route that we need to take? Hindi ba dapat love of country, service to the nation, dying for your people? Nawala na yan eh, puro. Can you imagine? Out of money, Mr. Secretary, can no longer continue spoiling them. <laughs> that is why. I'm, I, that's what I'm saying. These are questions being asked by officials, former respected officials of the armed forces, what happened to our institution? So uh, walk us through the possible consequences. So as we you said, there are some distractions going on domestically. You, you mentioned these uh, flashpoints in the region, um, this this growing mindset that you you observe from Europe that's more geared to conflict rather than peace. What's the consequence? Walk us through what are the scenarios here if there are no interven interventions uh, um, done. You know, ang problema talaga yung sinasabi ni Senator Kit. Okay. Uh, uh, our kind of leadership is is not uh, is not. Uh, Yung, yung consultative. Okay. A kind of leadership is emanating from one. Uh, from one person. So, yan. Tignan natin mabuti kasi kung magbabago si Bongo, you should listen to what Kit has said about consultations. Mm. About 
mobilization. I remember very well, I have a friend in Sweden, and I, I said, how great is your president, see si all of Palma, Galing. And what the, the guy told me, no, no, no. Olo Palmi is not that intelligent. He's not that, that great. But there's one thing that Olo Palmi has that we love as Swedes. He is able to gather people to work together, bring people together, and provide a direction for Sweden what to pursue. Yung hinahanap ni Kit na blueprint. Roadmap. Roadmap. But those are important. Sa leader manggagaling yan. For example, I, kami nila, yan, my, my friends who, who work in national security, we, we understand that generals are trained to obey orders. Mm. So if there are no clear orders, you can imagine what will happen to the country. Ako, I, I used to comment, I, I know some personalities serving both in the past presidency and today, mm -hmm. sabi ko, sayang naman these generals, you know, because they are being asked to do things that they are not trained for. For example, policy formulation. Dapat nagagaling yan sa presidente. So kung anong ino-order niyan, yun dapat ang nangyayari. Eh kung walang order na maayos, oh. during the last presidency, mukhang yung mga general, pinabayo, kayo nang kailang mag-isip cannot be because that is not their training. Kaya ganito yung takbo ng ng uh, sitwasyon natin. So many problems that we are encountering today is because of lack of sustained leadership all throughout from one administration to the other. Ngayon we have a president that is new. Bagsak sa kanya lahat yung resulta ng past administration is in his lap. And I, I, I believe that these problems he's getting are very serious problems. How do you go about it? Mobilize the nation. Ask questions. Ask help. Senator? Well, what should you do? Yeah, well, where does he start? <laughs> Maybe the question is what do we do? Okay. Well, uh, to begin with, most, most leaders, when they're elected, the first mandate is to form a government. Right. Complete the organization of your government, and then you have your roadmap and you start, uh, mm. you know, moving things. It has not completed this government. Yeah. And even that part of government that he has come somehow made appointments, do not know what to do. Mm. So, what what should he do now? I mean, that's fill those first. Uh, do if something I, else. Or? If I'm thirty years younger, maybe I'll do something else. The, you know, one, one good thing that I saw is that the president reacts to pressure. Okay. Look at, uh, like it or not, yung pagbabago ng, pagbabago ng chief of staff, removing the national security advisor, that's pressure. Mm -hmm. That's pressure. Yeah. So, importante, sorry kita, yeah. I have to cite one of your article. The need for a real opposition. The need for a correct or real opposition. Kasi kailangan may check and balance yan eh. yeah. In a democratic country, you need that. We have no opposition eh, according to Kit. And I ask, I agree with him. So I'm volunteering, I will be a part of an opposition. Hindi yung opposition na talagang wawasakin mo yung bayan. No. Yeah. You provide alternatives. If there is no roadmap coming from Malacanang, you produce a roadmap. Mm. And see, ang kaya ang tingin ko, hindi naman inflexible yung Pangulo natin. That's, to me, is a good okay. thing. O, alam niya, nagkamali sa, sa, sa issue ng Chief of Staff at saka yung batas dapat baguhin. Yeah. And that is because of, 
you know, we, we have not seen this, but the, the lobby inside the armed forces was very intense on this matter. Intense yan. Maraming retired generals. And uh, nakikita ko ngayon sa mga retired generals, they're beginning to expand their issues. I think a group of uh, retired generals are about to issue a paper on corruption. Sabi ko ba, ang layo na yan sa promotion system. But it's beginning. Now, if the president uh, addressed this with suspicion of be, you know, then his suspicion will be confirmed. Mm. Dapat yan, demokrasya tayo, tingnan niya what an opposition is and react accordingly. Mm. But if he starts listening to people, ay, ako, conspiracy yan, ganito yan, ganito yan, ah, walang nangyari. Yeah. Tina, you want to ask something? Sir, uh, do you ever see it happening in time soon? President Marcos will take a page out of former President Duterte's playbook of appointing ex-generals to more positions in government. Mm -hmm. Just to appease. Mm -hmm. To calm down the, the simmering. You know? <laughs> if, if you look at uh, what's going on, it seems to be moving in that direction. Okay. Siam. Well, I think that that's what the senator was asking you earlier. Oh. All of the former Duterte yeah. people are, yeah. are back. You know? They're good people, huh? Ed yeah. Anu is a great uh, choice for NSA. Almost as good as uh, Gloria Macapagalaro's choice of Norberto Gonzalez. Hindi. I think what, what would be needed get is a review. Alam mo, wag natin sabihin na Kasi galing sa panahon ni Corey, dapat huwag natin gayahin. Okay. Dapat i-review talaga yun. Very important to review certain good aspects in the various administrations of past presidents. Yeah. And derive lessons from it. Kasi real yan eh. Ito, hindi, yan, hindi na yan a theory. Real na nangyari yan. Nangyari yan. How, how was the armed forces handled during the time of President Corey. To me, I will recommend that for uh, study. Malaking nangyari. Um, President Corey Aquino did not bribe the armed forces. She did not spoil them. Uh, they spoiled her. <laughs> <laughs> because, because she spoke of what the armed forces should be. Ibinalik lang. Alam mo si... President Corley, konsepto lang naman ang pinuhudan niya eh. What is the armed forces? Ano ang mission ng armed forces? Ano ang sentiment na nagpiprevail dapat sa armed forces? Love of God, love of country, defending your people. I yan ang emphasis. And then, on the other side, ang sinabi naman ni Corey sa officials, nobody speaks ill of the armed forces. We must help the armed forces regain its respect from the people. This is Corey. I was there. Mm. Kaya alam ko yan. Ni-restore yung institution, ibinalik yung respect. Yeah. And that was okay. And President Ramos, talagang ginawa lahat yan. No? Yeah. Ni-restore ang promotion system, ni-restore yung, you know, Talagang binalik yung practice uh, ng uh, traditions of the armed forces. That is why na-alarm yung mga officers today. Pati ako na-alarm because yung important traditions that were re-established through the years until, until FBR actually, ni-restore lahat yan. Kaya yung armed forces, nakita nila, it, ito kami. We are really the, the uh, defender of the people. We represent what is best for our people when it comes to honesty, discipline. Kita mo ako, you know, I was placed in so many positions by GMA. I didn't care much. But when it comes to becoming Secretary of National Defense, I have to admit, I liked it. Why? Because... Yung nagsiserve sa'yo ng mga armed forces, 
nag-i-speech ka pa lang. Yung policy declaration mo doon, isinusulat na. E ginagawa na ng OPLAN. At kahit matulog ka, sila hindi natutulog. Because they were restored to that kind of uh, human beings, of public servants. They are the epitome of authentic public service. Na, nagawa ng dalawang presidente yan, magkasunod. Na, of course, degenerate dahan-dahan. Ngayon, pagdating dito, you see, you know, I, I do not want to criticize our president. Kasi overload yung dami ng problema niya. Pero yung bigla mo, pinalitan yung isa, pinalitan mo ng kabila. Na no notice, in twice. fact. It happened twice. <laughs> in, yeah. Can you imagine that? Anyway, I think we have to learn from other countries, you know. Also. Uh, alibaba, sa America, you travel out to America. Uh, in every airport, during boarding, announcement says, members of the armed forces will be the first ones to board. They, they pay so much deference and respect mm. to their military men. No. Totoo This yan. is something small. Kung magagawa natin dito yan, malaking bagay. A- alam mo yung, yung nangyari nga nun, Kit, to presidency, ganyan yan. We, we have learned to respect the armed forces to the point that, to the point that We, we, we always think that they are the ones to do what we, the people, must do. For example, change of government. Oh. Bakit lagi tayong tingin, sana, sige, sali tayo, hudi ta ba yan? We are always looking at the armed forces to be the one to do things that should be being done by the people, by the organized citizens. But we don't have that now. Well, Secretary Herbert, thank you very much for your time. But before we conclude, any final thoughts? Uh, I think we, um, I'm a little worried that instead of clarifying issues, we may have confused it because we have too many <laughs> subjects. <laughs> so, <laughs> how do we distill it? What's uh, what's the takeaway well, that you uh, that you want to leave behind? Well. Um, Very important that we we give our we give a message to our president, no? and that is without causing a suspicion that we are out to oust him. Okay. No? The 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 problem of the nation is talagang huge. He should he should uh, consult, pay attention, to it. pay attention, consult his friends. Uh, friends of his friends. Yes, he was just a phone call away. Yeah, like, like that. He, uh, do do that, do that, no. What kasi ang at saka you know what is so disturbing is that you know when I was exiled in Europe, it, the Europeans are very particular about immediate family interfering with governance. Very a uh, no no mm. no no. Mm. Eh ngayon, lahat ng chismis tungkol sa yeah. immediate family, leading the nation exte- instead of the elected one, mm. I think that has to be addressed. Thank you very much, Secretary. Thank you, Secretary. Yeah.